The Brussels Griffon is a sturdy, intelligent toy dog known for his jaunty good nature and high spirits. The modern-day Brussels Griffon traces its ancestry to the Belgian street dogs of the last century. These shaggy-haired peasant dogs were crossed with German Offenpinchers to produce a hardy little stable dog adept at catching rats and other vermin. Soon, traits from crossbreeding with the Chinese pug were added, and later, the Ruby Spaniel became part of the combination. By the late 19th century, the Brussels Griffon had reached its present form. You'll be seeing many Brussels Griffons during this presentation. Some are outstanding examples of the breed, others are less so. But all will help your understanding of the breed. Now let's begin. In general appearance, the Brussels Griffon is an intelligent, alert, sturdy toy dog with a thick set, short body, and a smart carriage. In proportion, he appears square in outline, as measured from point of shoulder to the rearmost projection of upper thigh and from withers to ground. The breed is shown in two coat types. The rough-coated type, seen here, and the smooth-coated, called the Brabanson, seen here. Both rough-coated and smooth dogs are shown together and indeed are often found in the same litter. Weight for both dogs and bitches usually ranges from 8 to 10 pounds, but should not exceed 12 pounds. Remember, though, that type and quality are of greater importance than weight, and a smaller dog that is sturdy and well-proportioned should not be penalized. Let's begin our detailed examination of the Brussels Griffon with the head, which is a most important part of your evaluation. The skull is large and round, like this, with a domed forehead. See how the skull rises high above the eyes and nose, with no wrinkling. From the front, you can see the desired wide skull rising fairly high above the nose and eyes. but this skull does not rise soon enough, while this one is too flat on top. Remember the griff's skull should be rounded with a domed forehead. This skull is correct, large and round, with a domed forehead, rising fairly high above the nose and eyes. Note, too, the definite stop made by the layback of the nose, which is correct. This dog's foreface is correct. Note the short upper lip. See how the jaw is undershot, prominent, and wide, with a strong upward sweep. From the front, you can see that the jaw is hinged far back under the ear and is very wide, making for a broad foreface and a broad upturned underjaw. The turn-up of the jaw is one of the most characteristic components of the correct Brussels Griffon head seen here. While the jaw must be undershot, if it is not upturned and cleanly fitted with the upper jaw, like this, the teeth and tongue may protrude. This is not correct, but should not be confused with a hanging tongue, which is a disqualification. In young puppies with jaws that are not fully formed, the teeth may be slightly visible. An overshot jaw is a disqualification. This dog's jaw is level, which is not desirable. See how it adversely affects the dog's expression. Note that a wry mouth in which the jaw is not level and drops a bit to either side is a serious fault. This dog's jaw juts out but does not turn up properly. And this jaw is too narrow. This dog's jaw is correct, undershot, but not to the point where teeth or tongue show when the mouth is closed. The lips are the finishing edge of the jaw and are edged with black. 
They should not be pendulous, showing no flue, and should meet cleanly. A correctly shaped jaw is critical to proper nose and eye placement. You can see that the tip of the nose is set back deeply between the eyes, forming a layback. This dog's jaw is correct, with a close finish of mouth. The nose is very black, with wide nostrils. See how the nose is set on the same plane as the eyes. This dog's nose is set too low. This indicates that the jaw lacks sufficient turn-up. A Dudley or butterfly nose is a disqualification. This nose is correctly placed and is black with wide open nostrils. These eyes are correct. They're set well apart and are very large. They should be so dark as to appear almost black, like these. The long eyelashes are black and there is black edging on the eyelids. These eyes are too light. These eyes are incorrect. They're too small and deeply set. These large, wide-set eyes are correct. Note again the dark color, long lashes, and black eye rims. Ears are small with fine leather and set rather high on the head. The Brussels Griffon may be shown with ears cropped, like these. Or natural, like these. A good natural ear should be small. Natural ears should be carried semi-erect, as these are. The natural ear should break at a little above the level of the skull, with the flap falling forward to cover the opening of the ear. These ears are well set, but they are flying ears. These ears are too high and close together. What about these ears? They're too large and stick out to the side. And this dog's ears are set too low. These ears are small and are correctly shaped and placed. Note again the high set of the ears. On both these dogs, you can see how the components produce the characteristic Brussels Griffon expression, intelligent, alert, almost human. Now let's consider the Brussels Griffon's neck and body. The neck is of medium length, like this, and in proportion to the body. It's gracefully arched and should give the impression of strength. This neck is too short. This neck is of proper length with a graceful arch. See how it blends smoothly into the shoulders, which are well laid back to ensure good forward reach in motion. The forelegs are straight and well-muscled, like these. From the front, you can see that the legs are set moderately wide apart and are straight from the point of shoulder. See how the chest is moderately broad. This dog appears narrow in front. while this one elbows out. See how the forelegs are bowed and the feet turn out. This dog's moderately wide chest and straight, strong forelegs are correct. From the side, you can see that the brisket is deep, reaching to the elbow, and that the forelegs are well-boned and sturdy. Pasterns should be strong and short, like these. The feet are round, small, and compact, with the toes well arched. They should point straight ahead, turning neither in nor out. Pads should be black, and toenails are also preferred black. These pasterns are weak. These splayed flat feet are faulty as our long hair feet.
The Griffon's body is thick-set and short, with well-sprung ribs and a level, short back. The Brussels Griffon should be square. This long body is not correct. This dog is correctly proportioned. Note again the level back with no sign of a dip or roach and the well-sprung ribs. This dippy top line is incorrect. This roach back is faulty. The tail is a natural extension of the spine. It should be set and carried high like this one and is docked to about one-third its natural length. The tail should be held and carried from a 12 o'clock to a 2 o'clock position. This tail is set too low on a steep croup. The hindquarters should give an impression of power with good bone and muscle. There should be sufficient angulation to balance with the front and should allow the dog to move with good drive from the rear legs. You can see that the hind legs are set true with the legs turning neither in nor out with strong, well-muscled thighs. The stifles should be bent and the hocks well let down. Like the front feet, the rear feet are round, small and compact with well-arched toes and black pads. This dog appears overangulated in the rear, throwing him out of balance with the front. And this dog's straight stifles and weak rear are incorrect. This dog is correctly angulated with strong, well-muscled thighs. From the rear, you can see that the hocks are parallel, turning neither in nor out. Note the short distance from the hock joint to the ground. These hocks are weak, forming cow hocks. This is faulty. Here again is a correctly balanced and proportioned Brussels Griffon. Despite its small size, the Griff is never delicate or dainty. He should carry himself proudly, like this one does, with his strong, cobby body, well set on firm legs. Now let's discuss the Brussels Griffon's coat. As mentioned earlier, there are two coat types, rough and smooth. Let's consider the rough coat first. The rough coat is a double coat and is wiry and dense. The more wiry and more dense, the better. It should never feel woolly or silky. Although the coat should never be so long as to create a shaggy appearance, it is slightly longer around the eyes, nose, cheeks, and chin, forming a fringe. A rough coated griff with a correct coat texture will seldom have abundant furnishings. This coat has been left too long, creating an undesirable shaggy look. A woolly coat is not correct. The coat must be long enough to determine texture. This Griffon has been properly groomed for neatness of appearance. You can see that the hair on the head has been tidied, with sides stripped accentuating the fringe above the eyes and beard at the chin, but still maintains the desired fringe. This is a hand-stripped breed. Coats prepared with scissors and or clippers should be severely penalized. This dog's coat on the head has been left too profuse, which is not desired. This is a correctly trimmed face with a distinct but moderate fringe. The smooth coat should be short and sleek. There should be no facial stubble and no trace of wire hair. Permissible colors for both the rough and smooth variety are one red, a clear reddish brown. Black at the whiskers and chin is allowable. 
2, belge. This color is black and reddish-brown mixed. A black mask and whiskers is usually found in this color. 3, black and tan. Black with uniform reddish-brown markings appearing under the chin, on the legs, above each eye, and around the edges of the ears and around the vent. This color follows the conventional black and tan pattern found in other black and tan breeds. And four, black. This color should be a solid black. Any white hairs are a serious fault. A white spot or blaze anywhere on either rough or smooth coats is a disqualification. But the graying or frost seen on this mature dog's muzzle is natural and should not be penalized. The Brussels Griffon should move at a purposeful trot with balanced reach and drive to maintain a steady top line. There should be no wasted motion. Sound movement is required of this sturdy little breed. Coming toward you, the front legs should be carried straight forward and not thrown out to the side. The Brussels Griffon should not single track either. And going away, the rear legs should push off powerfully with moderate width between the legs. See how the hocks remain parallel. This dog is close in the rear. This dog throws his front legs out to the side. This hackney gait is faulty. Here again is proper movement. Purposeful, with good reach in front and drive behind. See how the back remains firm and level. Finally, a word about temperament. The Brussels Griffon, despite his diminutive size, is a strong, alert, sensitive, but intelligent companion. He is reserved with strangers, but is affectionate and playful with proper introduction. Let's review the disqualifications in the Brussels Griffon standard. They are a Dudley or butterfly nose, a white spot or blaze anywhere on the coat, a hanging tongue, an overshot jaw. With his checkered past and impish disposition, the Brussels Griffon has sometimes been called a little street urchin. It's precisely these qualities of good nature and hardy constitution that have won him such widespread popularity.